Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have something a little different for you. I'm breaking down the Xbox Elite Controller 2. I still recommend this controller. I did have an issue that I found later on uh, where the A is actually pretty unresponsive. So I have a little clip for you after the intro so you can see how unresponsive it is. And I break it down and repair it. So uh, one thing to note is I will be putting timestamps in the description so you can jump to the parts of the video that interest you if you don't want to watch me pulling the top off the controller or different parts of the video you can jump right to the parts that interest you all right so here we go okay so here's the issue with the a button is if i don't hit it straight on then the button doesn't engage at all so even a, a light tap or coming in from the side won't engage the a button at all i have to get it straight on So first it's really important to get a good tool set and I will put links in the description below for the tools I got. They have a good weight to them and they have magnetic tips for the screwdrivers which are a T standard so uh, Phillips or something like that will not work. You, you need a special type of screwdriver. It also comes with the plastic opener which is important because you don't want to be using a knife and scratching up your controller. And it comes with some tweezers, which are great for getting into some hard to reach places. And you'll see where we use that a little later. So it's also important that you have a good workspace. And I use a tech mat here. And it's not required as long as you have like a nice empty big space to work in. But I think this tech mat looks awesome. And I'll have a link to that below. So I speed through a lot of getting the case off initially because it's a lot of just twisting and trying to get into hard, difficult places. And there's really not to learn from it, except you're just gonna have to take it slow, be careful, but firm, and you'll eventually get it open. You'll be prying away from some clips, and there's also some tape on both sides of the controller. So once you get those off, it comes off pretty easily, but it does take some time. Just take it easy, take a breath, and make sure you have the time to invest in this because you don't want to do this too quickly and end up breaking something. Okay, so one thing I struggled with for a long time is under this white piece of paper, there is another screw. So make sure that you get the screw under there or the whole thing is not gonna lift off like it's supposed to. Okay, to get the green circuit board out, you have to grab a thumbstick. I would grab the fattest one, and then you have to turn that to lift the dome of the thumbstick out. Here, I did not go and get my nails done. My wife is really good at this type of thing, so I did a little tape team and got her in here to help me out. The green circuit board has two screws that you have to unscrew. It also has two pins sticking through it that you will have to lift it up over. The blue circuit board has four screws that you have to unscrew. It also has one pin sticking through it that you'll have to lift up over. So unfortunately there's a little off screen, but you do have to force the one of the bumpers off to be able to get the green and blue circuit boards out. So you have to take a tool and there's a little hook that the bumper is on and so you have to get it out of that hook. In the process of this the audio jack will fall out because it is just sitting between those two circuit boards and the case actually holds it in place so that will fall out you'll have to remember to put that back in before you close up the case or you won't have an audio jack. So here you can see we got the rubber mat out that is the 
contact point for all the buttons on the controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some rubbing alcohol and just clean out the A area a little bit. We don't think anything's wrong with that because the A button has always been like this. It came from the factory like this, so we, we didn't think there would be any dirt in it. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is take some electrical tape, take two small squares, and just put it on the bottom of the A button and see if that can give the A button enough padding that it actually makes the contact it needs to when it's pushed down. There's two little plastic bits that fit in the bumper area, and you can put those on right before you put the face back on the controller. So this is that 3.5 millimeter jack and you want to make sure that the contacts will be facing the green board because there are no contacts in the blue board and it will just kind of sit there but yeah the contacts will be facing the green board and it will jiggle a little bit until the case is all set and ready. So if you remember, we took off the bumper so we could get the circuit boards out and we had to force it off a piece of plastic to get it out. While that piece of plastic will break on the way back in, it's not an important piece of plastic. It doesn't really do anything. It might stabilize things a little bit, but our controller feels completely normal without that. So don't worry about it if you have to break that piece to get into the controller and get your button working correctly. One more kind of strange thing that we found is that once we got the bumper back in place, the trigger button and the bumper would interfere with each other. But that wasn't an issue once we got the case fully back together. So the case is actually supporting the trigger and keeping it from going up too far so that it interferes with the bumper. Once the case is on, that won't be an issue. So if you find that the bumper isn't pushing down because the trigger, trigger isn't down, then you should be okay once you get the case on. And as you can see, we finally got it all back together. It still turns on. The A button actually works like it's supposed to. I'm trying it in all different sorts of ways. And it actually functions and reacts to my button presses. So we were so thrilled after taking apart a $180 controller that we were able to get it not only working, but working better than it was before. 
So if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Peace.